This week's Growing With My Buds, Dan, this is your forte. What do you mean Wavelengths, and its effect, <laughs> light wavelengths, and its effect on plant genetics. Wow. This is complicated as smoking. Very complicated. Weedipedia, mofos. Mm. Should, would sure. you like me to? Would you like me to set you up for the? Sh- hey, or are you gonna go for it, dude? <laughs> go for it. You you bring us into this one. <laughs> so there's this thing going around about um, how not just light, but the wavelengths of light mm. can affect the genetics of plants. That's like saying we take two clones of me or you at home. Yeah, we take two clones of gen- gen- genetics. Genetics. So, so it's like saying that the sun is gonna change. Your, your genetics. genetics. No, what is this one about? What the I'm talking about is this, this. There was an article about oh, genetics, but there's this also the article about cannabinoid content. Oh, okay. But effectively, the thing is wavelengths. Lights, yes, it is crazy. Wavelengths. Uh, uh, it's not just color. There's color of light. There's intensity yes. of light. But wavelengths are hugely important. But you don't really hear Oak speaking the beach about versus it. versus a mountain. Beach, how strong is the, the summer, how strong is the light towards it in terms of the wavelength? How when you're closer to the light or not? No, spectrum. You get different speeds. Well, that's it. You're getting different spectrum because yeah. of your distance and your wavelengths travel certain distances to get to the plant. So, they are basically saying that by using different wavelengths of light, LED more than likely, which they can change and play with, or just Gosh, playing around with CMH, mm-hmm. metal halide. HPS. No, this one HPS. Was this HPS? This on cannabinoid and morphology. So they just played with HPS in that one so that they can use, they would use HPS and see yeah, if that changed certain treatments. things compared to it being maybe outside under natural light. They put it under, under artificial light and see what it does. Well, plants under HPS were taller and had more flower dry weight than those under the, eight, the other two lights. So exactly, there is. It's the one light produced more CBG, the other one. And higher CBC, CBD, and THC concentrations. It also aspects. comes to the light is going to create different environmental factors. Also, what's happening inside the room, so that will then create also maybe more phenotype different differentials. So you can manipulate the yeah. spectrum of your flower by uh, adjusting the, the lights. lights. Because the lights give different spectrum. Yes. Right. The plant's just adapting to its environment. So people think that if you take an H, an, a, if you go HID growing, for instance, and you put a metal halide light to vegetate, and you're vegetating and you're vegetating, now you, they say to you, no, you have to change to HPS to flower. That's not true. You can still do it, but when you do do it in that way, your end product is going to be different to what it would be if you did change it to an HPS, because the HPS brings in a spectrum that is more suited to plant morphology, I guess, that allows it to Makes more develop the plant. Of yeah. Because of the way the light wavelength is hitting the plant, the effect of that they had more dry weight. The they HBS had more dry lights, weight. The HPS lights had more dry weight. Yes. But the other two lights produced more cannabinoids. So here they're saying that their results prove or show that the plant morphology can be manipulated by the light spectrum. Yeah. And then it's also possible to affect the accumulation of these cannabinoids and increase potential medicinal grade cannabis. Oh wow. Yeah, so, like, there's a, right now, Steve just said there, uh, Bugby, he's a, what's it, Steve Bugby? There you go. There we go. This man here, if you want to learn anything about light wavelengths and about light and how it works with your plants, go to YouTube and watch this guy. He's from Apogee. Apogee is a company that does the testing. They, they develop the sensors. Sensors that do testing for yeah. power sensing and see what how much light travels and far in the spectrums, etc. Um, but, yes, it, it can. It can change it. You yeah, they, into tested, they tested under a tree as well, so the shade, why the plant stretches, because under in shade, it's mostly IR that comes through, because exactly. there's the proof, far red goes right through the leaf, Yes. same as green. Yes. So this is a, you know, it's... It's really interesting. This, this is really guy. is higher level. This is the guy. <laughs> um, and the one thing that is, that people are loving is, the, is LED technology because you can really manipulate it to the specifics that you want. You can go far red, deep red. Can you make blue. mistakes by just grabbing random LEDs? Yeah. Yes. Of course yeah. you can. You can't yes. just grab random, random LEDs. You have to make the right ones. If you do, you're not going to get the balance. best results. It's a waste yeah. of it's a waste of what you're doing. Power. Mm-hmm. Yeah, your it's power, a waste of power turning over into photons. Yeah. So the plant photons. will grow. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, it will grow, but it won't grow as it should or develop the way it should. So... I think we're very fortunate that this evening we were actually showing you an example of this, literally with the um, the bud we had yeah, the of the one grown places. indoor yeah. yes. and the one grown outdoor, mm-hmm. same clones. Yeah, so when I, what I was saying earlier, when I say uh, expressing genes, X Men vibes, it's not that it's changing genes, but what 
that's how people are sort of uh, making it easier to understand is that what they're saying is the light can affect how genes within the plant express themselves and you can optimize them to that. So like if I'm a ginger, low key, maybe I shouldn't be outside all day, but yeah. maybe indoors I thrive. Yeah. Under the under the LED that's Again, optimized to my vibe, and I make Again, all the, the beach ginger beach versus a mountain, the yeah. beach versus a desert versus the city. Uh, you know uh, how close you are to the ocean versus how far. And, yeah. Uh, light where the sun uh, here in the desert in the high fell altitude is what kind of sun path you're getting. Is it actually going to thrive in the shade on the south side? You know, so it's uh, it's really down to where well, it's been it, bred. Like you're saying, been breeding in a tent in Europe, mm -hmm. it's mostly going to be doing well in that kind of condition. Mm -hmm. That you listen to like you're mind. saying with regards to like Afghan. If you go into the Afghans and look at the ones that are yeah. going up on mm -hmm. the mountains, very close to the sun, or yeah. much higher and much, much, much closer, their resin production is beyond. It's like Different really spectra, high yeah. because they now are being affected by a spectrum, a wavelength that is really getting into them. Whatever Way it more might UV, be. Yeah. exactly. Some kind of UV is really affecting mm -hmm. them. So what yeah. are they doing? They're releasing more THC in mm -hmm. order to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. They're creating their own sunscreen, essentially. But only because it's been bred there. Yes, but that's what I'm saying. Because yeah. of that light, it is doing that. Because I think in the beginning they might have struggled there. If you, you know, take if you take a Swazi, years, you put a Swazi up exactly. there, or or Durban poison, or, do a, so or a, right a, a maybe it's well, but it won't be like growing it here. It's not going to grow the same. It'll it's look not going to grow. It'll be completely right. sparse. <laughs> not <laughs> only soil, it's because yeah. genotype plus environment equals phenotype so even you growing up in china you would be different than growing up here it's just how it is you know it, you are being affected by, by environment. Your environment so the plant the same thing yeah that's why stress <coughs> and those kind of things on the plant it's a real thing light mm. included generally solar you, flares you, solar flares can cause hermes that's intense like solar that's, flares yeah, can intense. In plants, not people. Can. <laughs> not people. <laughs> Some plants will fuck out on a weird uh, solar event that happens, maybe. You know, so there, there are those kind of like outlying things that can happen. So, well, for all the indoor growers just over light. that's trying to manipulate their light, like Nigel Coddle says, generally the closer the spectrum is to natural sunlight, the better. Thanks to many years of evolution, because so we can't sit here and think we're going to make it better and push more light to it, because the plant can't absorb more photons. It has a DLI. There's a whole lot yeah. of things that just can't. The tank it, is it full. can't take in more than what it needs. It doesn't need yeah. to take in more than what it needs. Certain plants only take certain amounts, and certain plants need more. So, it's it feels like so, like this dude saying. Uh, one firstly, thank you to the dude who says we're so 2018. <coughs> no, that's cool, bro. Uh, but he also tunes at this budgie oaks the dude to go check. Uh, you guys are talking about sunlight here, yeah? but the thing is, like you were saying earlier, you were showing me that the technology has advanced so much and the ability to measure it, that when these oaks create light, they can create it so specifically that maybe when you, it depends on what your outcome is. If you want to grow something that's 50% THC, mm -hmm. maybe that is going to be possible with how finely you can dial well, these things in. Like, like roids. Like, like, yeah. like but in that experiment, they show by just growing lettuce under white light and adding 10% red, you get almost double the plant mass. Same exactly. plant. Mm -hmm. Just adding 10%. Because the infrared or the far red pushes the... So uh, powerful. The leaf creation. Mm -hmm. So because lettuce, all it does is grow leaf, it loves it. And in that experiment, he shows how the plant with 10% red is, you can see for yourself, three, four times the other plant. Yeah. Hmm. So well, maybe you want it to, to be more something focused. I know lots of bricks. Is a they even tested for bricks and all that to see how it messes with the plant, if in any way. Usually it is more bricks. So... There is a... But if you want the real... Are people looking in at it, depth, what are bricks? Like, oh, bricks. Because so the, the sugar, sugar content. content in the leaf. And That's your actual little... nutritional value of lettuce. Because you can buy lettuce that's just full of water. It's going to do nothing when you eat it. You see it all the time. You buy something today, tomorrow it's fraught. Or you get a plant that actually has medicinal value in that sense. Of being nutritional. And has a high content of nutrition for you when you eat it. Yeah. And that only happens when the sugar content turns over. And it does the simplifying of the complex shoes from the soil to the fruit. I've got one last new question. So, all the grow books I read growing up, 
kind of alluded to this already. Because they always said, high pressure sodium made more. Ceramic metal halide made less, but frostier. Is that true? Because yeah. this kind of speaks yeah. to that. This this validates potentially it's this. Exactly that. You're speaking exactly of that. what wavelengths, different or different UV. spectrums that you're getting out of the light is, is pushing the plant to yeah. push it. It really is. What is ceramic metal halide? Gives you, you remember really those frost bolts. frosty buds. Yeah. You remember so the frost bolts. So you grow it really and exactly. finish off with the ceramic. Yeah. So, yeah. Back, so if you look at the, the older grow bulbs, bulbs, it used to get you used to get like four finishing bulbs or two uh, finishing bulbs. And you always bulbs wondered really why did you have that? Because what it is is just you're just narrowing that gap and getting closer to the spectrum that is going to frost the plant more, give it a plant okay. more of what it wants and give it that energy just to burn mm -hmm. up or, or protect itself because creating more frost essentially. Yep. I'm not a fucking plant scientist, so I can't give you the exact reasoning, yeah. but it works. And ceramic metal halide is the same thing. It does, it has more it's, UV. It's, it's, a, it's a more UV in the bulb exactly on the higher the Kelvin. Combustion. Because of the combustion. There we go. Because the higher the Kelvin, right? We're on the, yeah. on the 6,000 Kelvin yeah, yeah. ceramic metal halide. This frosted the bulbs were 7,700. So, so yeah. guys would finish on it then. Go watch that Apogee video. That yeah, is man. some very informative video. Oh, that whole channel. It really is. That whole channel of Apogee is Because uh, they got a UV sensor. They got far-red sensors mm -hmm. they're selling. They sell uh, amazing spectrometers. So if you really have the bucks and you want to walk around and see your spectra that you're working with, even outside, I mean, if you got the bucks. If you can get a palm meter, toys. get one. Always get a palm meter. Yeah. If you can afford it, get one. It's going to help mm -hmm. you to... Yeah. No, the numbers. The numbers don't lie. Because, uh, yeah, I, I just do the little trick yeah. with just bought the sensor to my voltmeter, and then I just measure the part like that. But you can actually get a proper spectrometer from there. So, and see the spectra. It'll show you up to UV all the way to far red. Um, yeah. It's crazy. So it makes a huge difference that you can now dial it in like this. So who knows how it's going to get, but ultimately... It's crazy times. It's amazing times. The technology is getting cheaper. I know that Green Thumb Hydro are doing a launch soon of a lacquer GT300. Uh, pretty penny, but a dope thing. I think I hooked these oaks up with the hospital pass with the link. I'm just going to resend it. But guys, before we get...